Hello, this is Greg Brzezinski for Beard Brand, and I'm here at the Men's Club Barbershop in Philadelphia with Jake the Barber, and uh, he's going to sort out this mess. <laughs> what I'm thinking is, I want to cut my hair off in two phases, Okay. and so what can you do to keep actually most of this without looking like I'm trying to wear a man bun? Okay, so... Do you want to keep, I mean, we can keep all of it if you don't mind the overhang. I don't mind the, the overhang. I mean, is there, I, like, I don't want it up to zero. And, right, right, right. Yeah. I remember the picture you showed me um, was, it looked like there was some weight there, a good amount of weight. Right. And I think it was skin, right? The picture you showed me? Yeah, I'm okay with it skin, but I don't want skin up to the part. Right, right, right. Yeah. I can give you, like, a mid-skin fade. Um, section this off like it's sort of a disconnect or an undercut uh bring this up kind of short on the side but not buzzed um kind of like my sides so you see how mine are skin and there's still like all this weight here yep. and it's not zero up to the part and yeah, that's what have it like a disconnect like a like an undercut yep. and leave most of the top and if we have to cut the top we will <laughs> kind of like your call I have a bit of gel in my hair. Okay. So it looks like this hair naturally falls this way. And I don't like to fight the hair. So when the hair is just cooperating with me the most. Um, and that's why I like to part it. <laughs> really, uh, I try to stay away from forcing your hair to go where it doesn't want to go. Because then when it dries, it's when you run into a problem. So I just try to find where it naturally parts, and it, it can take a little while, but I just want to make sure, because this is crucial. We don't want to damage the goods here. <laughs> but I'd like, so ideally, I really want to leave a lot of weight in these areas, so it doesn't look like uh, it's so much of an undercut. You can kind of wear it. Um, this is obviously going to hang, but it can look almost blended. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to skin you up to, like you were saying, up to the part. So, so I'm going to take a number two. Um, and that's just going to knock out a lot of this bulk here. Um, and I like to take a two guard because it's pretty foolproof. Um, and I keep it low on something like this. I can always go higher on a haircut like this. Um, you can always take more hair off. You cannot put more hair on. So that's a rule of thumb. Always do... Uh, what you can fix. So I'm just going to take this number two all the way around the head, leaving weight here. I actually have Brzezinski tattooed on my hand, as you can see. So I'm going to take my triple zero, and I'm going to create a skin line about two inches below uh, the number two line here. To really start that skin fade. So I'm going to take my detailers and I'm just going to take away this stubble here that's left, that the triple zero left. So I'm just knocking off this stubble with, with the, the detailer. And you just want to flick, flick your wrist here so you don't really create any hard lines up towards the top. So I'm going to take the Andis Balding Clipper. A shaver, a foil shaver, and just take it just below where I had that other clipper taking off the stubble. And this is going to really eliminate the stubble and it's going to make your fade pop.
any remaining lines that I see, I'll just knock down with uh, these detailers that I had before. Next, got my Anus Master. It's an adjustable clipper, all the way open. And I'll put a line, so it's pretty much like a one, right below that two line that I put in before. I'll just go all the way around the head with it, about an inch below the number two line. I'll just close it a little bit as I go. And that's going to knock this line out. I'm just chipping away at these hairs. A little bit more. You can always hear the hair cutting. If you don't hear the hair cutting, there's no hair being cut. <laughs> What's your preference in tying a bald fade into a beard? I do the same thing, just the reverse steps. So, you really don't need all the guards uh, to knock this line out. Really, I like to take the master all the way open, just a small, maybe like a half inch, fade that line out, and then you just kind of corner away just a little bit and chip it away. You don't ever want to take it down too low. It's like a, it's like a no-no for beards, especially a beard like that. You don't want to, you don't want to take it halfway down the cheek, you know. So I'll put my one on, and I like to work from side to side. So I stay on this side once I really start getting into the fade. Um, I, I knocked that line out, um, the master all the way open, right? And I took it down to zero. And I met that, that first line that I put in um, with the triple zero, right? With the master. Now put a one on, same steps, all the way open. And I'll just fade down. And I'll come right below with the one all the way open, which is almost a two, I come right below the actual two line that I put in initially. And I close as I go down. I like to fade down. So I talked to other barbers about cutting gray hair. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, any difference? Um, you... um, it's actually easier in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And how, why is that? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I guess it blends with the scalp a little better. So if there is imperfections, they're invisible. Um, with dark hair, it's really hard because you can see every imperfection, especially on a light scalp. So um, it's like it's like having black paint on a white piece of paper. You know, it's, you can see it so well. Um, if you put you put a gray line on a white piece of paper, it's much harder to see. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. So you can be sloppy on my gray hairs? Up Absolutely. I actually have my eyes closed <laughs> for this beard line. I don't like to leave a hard line when I, you know, I put that skin line in right here. I like to just kind of corner this out so there's not a hard line. So now I'm going to work on this half line that I put in. I'm just finishing out the fade uh, with this one guard on right now, just kind of cornering it and chipping away at any little imperfections I see before I break out the shears. Just want to make sure all my clipper work is done. So for this part right here, before I get into the top, I like to take care of the sides. Um, and for hair like this, it's very straight and it tends to poke out. So what I'll do before I come in with shears is I'll actually get the comb, I'll get the clippers, and just kind of knock off these edges before I even break out the shears. It kind of just saves me some work, knock, knocks down some of this weight here. So 
now that a lot of that bulk is removed, it's going to be less work for the shears. And I really like to use shears for this part because it's fine tuning everything and I have control of, of what I'm doing with these. So I just kind of come in and chip away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin this out a bit with the thinning shears. So after I smooth it out with the normal shears, I just kind of want to take some weight out of here before I get into the top. And the top really doesn't need much work. I'm just kind of eliminate this edge here. Do people ask for a square back? Yeah, but I try to talk them out of it because it grows back and it looks kind of funky. I try to taper everything out. So like the, the back, I like to, if this is the back of your head, just kind of fade out gradually into the longer hair because it grows in naturally. If you square this, it'll be like me putting a hard line all the way around your head, if that makes sense. So this is all going to be stubble down here and this is going to be uh, significantly bigger or longer, the length of the hair. So with the top, Greg said he's trying to keep most of the length on top. So now that the sides are done, we can get into the top. And I usually cut the top first and then cut the sides, but uh, for this style, I like to cut the sides first um, because if I try to cut the top, I would have to cut the top, then section it, then cut the sides. So I just, I like to cut the sides first. So I'm gonna try to do uh, not a whole lot on top. I'm just gonna check it out. Wet it down, check it out, cut where I need to cut. Yeah, I want to be able to you know, part it and sure. you know, wear it rather. It's, it's as conservative as a bald fade can look. But. Absolutely. <laughs> but still, some style. I'm going to take a little bit off. Just kind of get the ends off. I mean, the top literally hasn't been cut in probably six months. Since Justin? Maybe? Yeah. Since that one video? Uh, the, not the last one, right? Like the, the one before that? Yeah. Probably? probably. Yeah. Maybe even back to December. Oh, wow. Uh... How are you deciding on length here? I'm just following the contour of the head. So I, I, I like to have, uh, for a style like this, uh, the front of the head. I like this hair to be... Uh, maybe you know an inch or so longer um, than the than the back because so for the back on the undercut I like I I like the overhang but I kind of want to mask the overhang in the back if he's wearing it straight back with the fade the length of the fade so I like to make it just short enough where it's not going to stick up but it's also kind of hidden by by the heaviness of this so I like to make it a bit bit longer in the front. I'm just evening out the back here just a bit. Just in case we want to go straight back so it looks more natural, but probably gonna go a little off to the side here. But we can go straight back if we want. Really good at either side. But if we're going straight back I like to make this look as even as possible. So, I'm pretty much completes it. I'm just going to kind of fine tune it just a bit, get the sides in order. Greg, what kind of products? How do you plan to style this when it's done? Um, one of the ways, I think I want to you kind of slick it back, but I think I can also part it hard and still keep it like this. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's why that's why I sectioned it out and I left the weight. So it's um, you can have like the classic look, like the classic parted look, and you just use your product um, and put it this way and this way, or you can go straight back with it, cover the parts, 
or you can either go this way and get more of a, a less parted look on this side, but an undercut look on the other side. So it's a, you can do a few things, as long as you have the right product. How's that look? Good. Cool. You want, just want to put a little uh, Absolutely. stuff right here. Yeah. <laughs> Is this for the beer brand? This yep. this video? Justin's one video has I think three hundred and fifty thousand views. No way. The club let let's go clubbing, I think we call it or something. Oh, cool. Just pushing it forward a little bit. The front here? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you are you going for some volume? Is that Which what you want to do? Can I give it a try? Absolutely. I don't know how that looks back there, but looks good. It looks more of a blended look back here. Still the undercut, but because that's probably how I'll wear it to work. Okay, cool. That look okay. Looks great. Looks fantastic. Now this is one of the most important and overlooked parts of every haircut: the neck hair. Make sure you get all the neck hair. it up. Top. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the skin fade. And the size and back. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And okay. if you can do a little bit. A bit down top as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, exactly. Okay. How cool. much short uh, can I go with the force? Is okay for you? Yeah, yeah. Very close, right? Yeah, cool. Okay. Okay, let's do it. It's a clipper. It's a it's an icon wall with customer's blade, so I'm going to open it a little bit and I'm going to draw my first line under there, under here, we, we go with the foils. I'm using a trimmer. Why am I using a trimmer? Because it's closer than the wall icon and it's more easier to, to cover the voice later there. As we said before, voice by wall, my magic brush for cleaning out all the hair here. Let's do it. Obviously here in the back part is a little bit more the space that I left because this zone of the head is the one with more density of hair so I need a little bit more space for fill it up that's why I left a little bit down but anyway I'm gonna fade it I'm gonna blend it a little bit even with the foil with another technique Blade open 
I'm gonna take just pretty much a finger with my magic brush. This month is going to be a nightmare because to empty the house. So, so this is like 0.4, not number 5. It's it just a little bit less than the green guard by a wall. That is the half. Going pretty flat with the blade, not too flat. flat. From the blade open to blade closed we have to blend all this line here that we created before so playing with the blade in this space between two fades yeah. obviously we are going to create another line that we can see we are going to do the same work with the blade a little bit open next step will be with one and a half and we are going to blend it up to fade it up this part square following the head shape because he wants to grow this part here for comb it down a little bit as a proper sideboard so I don't need to go too much in that obviously as much as we can because we have to clean all this line here. Number one. Blade close, half, 0 0.5 guard. We are going to clean all this line up there. My mom lives basically with my sister uh, and her family. She, my mom lives on the ground. Mm. This part. Where did you study? Uh, right. Looks easy, so but after you started to move to London to work, yeah, it's very, 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 very important. Yeah, I worked in Southampton for a year and then I worked in. Because the line here is something that gives contrast to the haircut, and it's the first thing that you can notice. So, if something is not perfect, you can notice straight away. Now I'm going to blend all this part to here. This is overcome. The fat line that we have here. You're ready now. All the edges. Let's start with this one. We're gonna style his hair with a little bit of styling balm, three ranger in this case. As you know, even on skin, it's perfect. You got something to drink? 
Would you um, like a beer? I'm good, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Happy with that? <laughs> so basically, okay, the crown at cool. the back. You <laughs> Thank you so out. much. What's up, beard brand? Charlie here. Got Elliot in the chair. We're gonna be doing a mid skin fade, parting on the left and pump it over to the right. So, what I'm gonna do to start off with this madness of hair. So I'm just gonna section it away. I don't need to deal with this just yet. I just wanna focus on these back and sides. So let's just clip that out of my way. The way I determine where to section the hair away, what's back and sides and what's yeah. top, is that I like to go just below. So you see where the hairline is? It kinda goes into like a corner here. Goes straight down, there's like a 90 degree corner. Yeah, I like to go just below the corner. So before I uh, put in any guidelines or anything like that, his hair is just too thick now to, to see where my zero line or anything like that would be. So what I'm going to do is get my matador comb, get my wool bolding clippers and just remove the bulk. Keep the spine of the comb against his head and just like graduate it out so it's longer at the top. This is removing all of that bulk and I'm going to be able to see what I can do. Follow that guideline all the way down. As I get to the back of the head, I angle my comb down. That is satisfaction. <laughs> just getting all that hair and just clipping it off. Satisfying. The thickness of the ma this matador comb is about the equivalent, equivalent of a grade two. So now I can actually see shape to the head. Got it in short. What I've done with the mouth is I'm going to take it in shorter and we've gradually got longer as we've gone up. And I can actually see shape now. My one and a half guard, fully closed. Just brush the hair down. Now let's start putting in that baseline. Man, your head's gonna feel so much lighter when you leave it. Like, you're gonna feel breeze against your skin again. I have to go like down a couple of notches on the hat side. Yeah, right, yeah, you probably will do actually. Going down to a skin fade. Nice. So what I've done, cleared the weight, put in my one and a half guard line. Now detailers and this. I'm gonna flip them around, put my thumb on that little spot there. I'm gonna start just below the occipital bone and just go straight across. It's a straight line. Clear all that hair. The reason I uh, drilled in my line before clearing all this is just so I know how high I want to go. So I know it's nice and even. Do you want your beard into a point, Elliot? Or so you're doing your beard when you get home? Uh, yeah, 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 that'd be cool, man. Put it into a point, yeah. Lovely jubbly. So we've just agreed that we're going to be putting it into a point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off putting my guideline, so temples about here. I'm just going to go below it. Follow your way around the ear and then connect up with that original line. The way you determine like where to put in that point, that line, you can see where this, his beard naturally grows back. You see like these short stubbly parts. You can see this line just goes all the way straight up. So all I've done is I've just followed it. I'll do that again more clear on the other side. Just so you get a good idea on how to do it. Find the temple, put your guideline just below it. 
You just connect yourself to the line down there. Arcing your way around the air. Sweet. So to put the beard into the point, what I'm going to do is you can see where the regrowth here is, but you can see that line just there. You just follow this guideline. There you go. That line nicely follows all the way to the top. Now we're off to the uh, wall foils. Flip them over. A lot of tension at the bottom of the uh, neck. And as we work our way up to the guideline, slowly release the tension and flick out. This will just uh, avoid any lines being caused by the foils. To work your way around the beard, and being careful, what I like to do is flip them this way around and only use the corner of them. Just to work your way around. Hold the ear, just dab it down. Nice, so where our one and a half line is, and I'm just gonna go straight one guard and go just underneath it. Not holding the clippers too flat, kind of flicking them. Now, off my uh, 0.5 guard, and I'm now just going to flick, flick below that one line that Who's I just put next? in. Yeah, that's it. Again, not keeping the clippers flat at an angle. Flick away that line. We're now got no guard, but what I'm going to do is instead of it being closed and fully open as a 0.5, I'm going to do just between, which is a 0.25. And like all the other guards, just don't hold it flat, flick it. The only thing you might want to do differently now that we're on no guard is just keep the skin taut. And there we go, the line is now disappearing. So that's the uh, lower part of the fade then. Now, just go back to your one and a half guard, fully open it so it's pretty much a two. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna flick away at this one and a half line and then we're just gonna go scissors. I've swapped my brush to a comb now just because I like to comb it down into the clippers, just feed it in there. The reason we're doing this instead of just straight away using scissors or clipper over comb is that I believe taking them that bit longer makes it a bit easier when we do our scissor work. Now I'll just wet down that weight that we've left on the sides and just scissor over comb it away. Using the uh, wide teeth side of my comb, picking the hair up, pulling it out, and away it goes. Moving on to the uh, top now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wet it all down. Comb it down into the, uh, the natural hair growth pattern. Once the uh, parting on the left side of the head, so just got to keep that in mind. He can't see a thing now, though. He is blind. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just sectioning where I want the parting. That feels about right. The way you can judge it is just 
Don't want to go too far over the hairline. Take that part in line all the way back to the crown. So now that I've uh, taken that part into the crown and I'm just combing the hair where the crown wants to sit, this hair all wants to go backwards back here. That's how that naturally wants to sit. Where the crown is. And all that wants to go forwards and up and over. So what I'm gonna do, start off at the crown. Take my first section. And just pull it out. You can see where I've left off with the scissor over comb. There's a short part, there's the longest. Connected. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. I don't know if you can see that in there, but there's the shortest point down there. And all this needs to go. Shortest point. Now that I've connected this side, what I'm going to do is just go over the line, just take my next section. Keeping the same angle of going across to the left. Sweet, so there's my next section. Now, straight across, comb, pick it up, and there we go. There's my guideline, this is what I need to cut. Straight across. So now we're getting to the front of the hairline, what I'm going to do is, as I comb up and pick it up, I'm actually going to pull it backwards. And because we want this to slide ever so slightly backwards. Final section. Comb all that over. Just comb that out my way. Pick this up. And as you pick up, you pull back, just to make it a little bit longer at the front. Shortest point, this is what needs to be done. Straight across. It's now connected. What I like to do with the front piece is just to, I feel like it makes it a little bit easier to style and takes rid of a bit of that bulk. What you do is you see at the very front of the hairline here, well, let me just dust them down. Got like the widow's peak here, the very front. What I like to do is get the tooth in my comb, take that, cut straight across, comb that down. As you can tell, it's still pretty long, it's still in his eyes. Let's make this sit a bit nicer. You grab it. You just angle it down. Point cut it. Makes it fit shape a little bit nicer. Now instead of going one more level up, what I do is I now flip back over to the wide side, put my, put my comb right on that line, pick it up, and just chip into it. Comb it back. Same again, on the line, pick it up. Chip into it. Where the part in line is, wide tooth comb. Just go through it and point cut it. As I do, as I, as I go in, I go in, open scissor, and as I pull out, I close. That kind of motion. What this does is add a bit of texture and takes out some of the weight. Now I've got my wide tooth comb, my thinning shears, and I'm just going to take out some of the bulk in the parting. These are just the finishing touches. So now we've finished off the haircut, I'm going to put in some products. I'm actually going to use the Tea Tree uh, Beard Brand Salt Spray. 
matte dry effect. Comb through the hair as I put it in, in the direction that I want it to sit. Finishing the heck off with just some nice medium shine pomade. Nice. Let's wash my hands. Yeah, sweet rare. So what we've done is just take it down to the skin and just fade away out with the part on the left. Oh, that be yeah, beautiful English tan lines right there. Nice one, bro. Nice. Happy. I'm from France and I'm living in London. Um, I'm visiting uh, Grand for New Haircut. So what we've discussed, uh, we try to grow this out of full here. It's gone to a little bit of a slick back, so you can see the hair's quite long in here. What we're going to do today is just a bit of a summer haircut. It's all been a little bit warmer in London now, so we're probably going to take it to something like that. A little bit of texture on the top and just messy, yeah? A little bit of a line running through there, so we'll just find the natural part somewhere. And then probably what, two or three on the back and sides? Yeah, even, even less. I don't know. Even less, yeah. Well, we'll see. Let's two, see. Yeah. I don't want to go too too much and yeah, show yeah, too yeah. much skin around there, yeah? Sure. Okay, and then we'll just taper it into the beard and taper at the back. Mm -hmm. Good. Take Great. a little bit of weight out as well, I think. Cool. Okay, my friend. So I'm just putting in the horseshoe now. We're trying to find uh, where it's going to fall natural for the curvature of the head. I've dropped it at the back a little bit so we can maintain a bit of uh, weight at the back. And uh, now I'm going to spray my clippers because cleanliness is godliness. And we're just going to go in and we're going to put in our initial corner. With a clipper over the comb technique. I might take them a little bit tighter, I don't know. We'll see. Alright, this is a number three because we're probably going to end up on about a one and a half, so just want to go in and clear out all the weight. Number two, we're just going to work our way down to be honest. Yeah. Down to uh, we got a 1.5 now, just coming up the uh, the nape. I'm just tapering this all out so it's nice and soft and natural at the back. So I've just got the detailers now and just uh, cleaning up the curvature there. And get those little ones out of the ears. So I'm just uh, scissor over combing now just to blend in a little bit, soften the sides. And then we're gonna go and cut the top. There's a lot coming off the top. Okay. I'm uh, just gonna connect in the back now. As you can see, I'm just pulling all of this across. Bit of a cheat, bit of a trick. Um, you're just cutting it on that baseline that you made with the uh, clipper over cone technique right at the beginning. And what this does is by over directing everything, you are maintaining all the length through the middle. We'll see how we get on if we want to take that corner, chop into it a bit. Just going to start off by cutting all of this square. Just connecting from the back, so you'll see I've got the guy running from the back there. I'm just going to run everything quite square. Just 
not going to be long in the front, so it's good. Nice. If we put a bit of texture in there, and you can wear it with a little bit more movement. Mm -hmm. So I'm just pulling in a little bit from the other side just to get my guide as well. I'm just going to go now and just cross check if everything is square on top there. So now also just connecting in the sides here. Just also back down to that initial guide we did with the clipper over the comb. And then you can see we got some nice fluidity there. That's your time out going yeah, with session to crown and then pulling that all down. For most guys it's very healthy as well. Like it's yeah. not like it all just blends nicely. Diet, so right. we're not really going to give them but, a strict um, part. It's just I've, going to be I've basically wearing it over. Henna in it? No, we'll see. I don't use it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's give it a wash, brown. mate. And then we're going to dry it and see how it sticks up. I just use a bit of hair lotion. Um, this is quite an old traditional tonic. It's for after shampoo and it's really good for the scalp. It's got a bit of um, alcohol in it, so the alcohol also helps to strip any um, build up of product. And uh, obviously, it is quite relaxing to have a little friction. So you kind of just see how long it holds. That's alright, you kind of just see how long you want to go in. Wish you could smell it, but you're missing it. So just a little uh, different texturizing technique. La, la, la. Just take a little bit of weight out of the hair. So. Chopping into it a bit. Do you want me to stand up or? Yeah, I've got a friend who's Sometimes I just like using the thinners a little bit toward the back here just so we can get some continuity. So now the dark patch here. Generally, the guys above the ears is quite light there, so you have to be careful with when you're fading. Because you might just get short. Mm. Well, looking yeah, like it's short, but then you've still got a little bit of weight underneath yeah. it. I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, matte pomade from uh, L'Oreal. I'm just going to wipe this in nicely. Uh, it's quite creamy, so that's why I like using it. Because it gives you a little bit of leeway when you're putting it into the hair. Because there's other grime marks that have come out of Birmingham as well. So. You see, I'm just going to give him a little sort of side part, but it's not a typical side part, it's just put in there. And then I'm just going to use the excess in the front. See, it's still long on top of you, at least, but now a little bit more textured, a little bit more weight on it. Great. Your boyfriend, he's, he's got long hair, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Pierre, happy? Yeah, great. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Okay, I'm Dave, we're at Gentleman Rose Club with Michael. We're trimming his hair today. Yeah, I'm gonna be. What are we gonna do with it, mate? So the top it just goes right back. Yep. And then skin fade on the sides. Skin fade on the sides. Yeah. So no, we're gonna quite work. Good length at the moment. Yeah, we're gonna work with the length then. Drop, get it not sitting nice at the back. Yeah. Are you parting on this side? Yeah, normally a little parting now. Okay, a little parting. Um, just natural parting though, yeah. yeah. Not shaved in. Okay. Okay, let's crack on then. Okay, so we're gonna use these true grips. These are pretty cool. So you just literally slide it into the hair and it holds. Mm. And that's going to allow me to access this area around here. These, are, these do hold pretty well. You have to put them in properly like that. I'm going to do the same on this side. There we go. 
Got number two guard on a wall senior. And we got the and we got it closed. So we're just gonna work out the bottom. <laughs> I only heard my name man. Do you know Carl or something? So we're putting in a weight line. Just around the edges to start with. And that's gonna be the top of our fade. Skin fade, baby. Okay, so we've worked all the way around the head. If you just drop down slightly for me. I'm just making sure that the back here is nice and level. And all of my light is coming through that, natural light is coming through that window now onto this haircut. So I'm going to be spinning the client around to, to utilise that, that uh, light. Okay, so we're going to start at the back. And not going to take this too high. I'm going to blend it quite low on the back. And I'm going to arch it up. So at this point, you want to just make a nice, almost like a smile shape at the back. I've got the blade as well, slightly off zero. So it could be there. But I've got it just off so it doesn't leave an impression on the line. Now I'm going to work from the temple back to that line. Like so. Just look up for me. Now I'm going to use the mirror to marry that up and make sure it's level. All right, now we've got the zero on the magic clip. I prefer this one because it's a little bit slower. It's, it's nicer to fade with. So it's, it's fully closed in a zero position. And we're just going to remove the bulk. What have you got to today then, mate? Uh, nothing much, really. We, uh, me and my partner, we had a, a little baby last week, so. Oh, awesome! Congratulations, dude. Little boy. Oh wow. Yeah, I think boys are going to be easier than girls. I've heard. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it does as well, to be honest. So this is a good example of the, because it, I'm taking out something that's white, I can see what I'm doing, but if I was trying to blend this hair, I'd have to be doing it on that side, utilizing the light in the shot. Right, we've got detailer, and we're taking it down. And we're flicking out just under our line. So a lot of like, American barbers, they'll stand in one spot and just move the whole chair around the yeah. whole cut. That's why they have like a mat. Yeah. Like yeah. Helps with your back problems as well. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe getting one of those mats. And you're putting the miles on the client so you're not like walking around the client all, you know, 15, 20 times. You're just moving it like that. It actually makes sense, you just move the chair. That's why it spins, surely, you know? That's, surely yeah. that is why it's because the look, design if is. Your best life is from one side. Yeah, then you're going to work on that. You can you, you know? walk around the client, just moving around the chair, spinning around. Right, while we're here, I'm going to just drop a little line in there. Just to tidy up, I'm going to take that out with a nice hook. So rest one finger on the client's head. Let me just hook that round. This is probably a good chance to say as well, thanks to everybody that came over to uh, the Captain Fawcett stand when I was at Barber Connect, said hello. Because there's a lot of people that watch Beer Brand that came over and had haircuts and stuff. 
people came over from when I was at Barber Connect. Oh, yeah, a lot of people yeah, came yeah. and had haircuts yeah. and stuff, man. Yeah, it was sick. So you got but they knew me. Saying they watched the yeah, they came from the from the channel, man. Yeah, it was really good. See? You're famous, mate. It was nice. It was nice to actually meet a few people as well that like watch the videos and said it really helps them and stuff. So yeah, it was cool. Okay, so just clean that up now. And now we're going to use our foils. Now these foils do need a little bit of a clean. So we're going to pop that lid. You can see that, it's all dead skin. Right, we're going to start foiling the fade. So we're going to put a line in around here. It's only a light line, nothing too harsh. Because the more, the harder the line you put in, the more you've got to get out. So everything below that line is going to be gone. Down to a double zero with a foil. Helps to go all different directions with this as well. Some of the hair on the back of the neck can grow in kind of nape whorls. And you're trying to get the hair into that hole, that very small hole, so that it can be cut. Yeah. Okay, so, you can see now there's a clear division between the bald and the sideburn. So it's best to taper that out to start with. So you can work against the grain, just kind of pushing onto it. And then flat it out. Right, now we're going to work the weight out of that. We put the line in with the zero. So we're going to do that by just working down to start with. We're not going to go too high. And that little bit there that's blending is just a little circular motion with the corner of it. And it's just helping me to not put a straight line in there. So I'm just using my number two again, just to define the parameters for my fade a little bit better. Okay, so this is going to be quite a quick fade. I'm not going to fade up to here and and spread it out, but with the, there's going to be a little bit of weight around there, and I'm going to just blend the line out, just because it sits nice with a lot of texture on top. We've got the seniors in a 0.5 position, and we're just going to tilt down slightly for me. We're just going to work that out about three quarters of an inch. This is like, I've adapted a way of fading for about three different ways. So, 0.5 in there now. I'm gonna take a one guard. And I'm gonna pop it on at a one and a half position. So it's gonna be fully open, one and a half position. I'm gonna use this just to remove that bit of weight there. And I'm kind of not really making contact with the head. I'm also, I'm almost pushing, pulling out. And all that's doing is it's just removing the edge of that hair. And not going in and putting more lines in. This only works when you're trying to do a really quick fade. So we drop that down to a one now. And we're just going to take that out just a little bit lower. And it, and it, it only looks good when it's on when it's used on long hair on the top so you can keep weight through the sides instead of going into the hair that guy and then we're going to drop down to a 0.25 we're going to start taking that line out So we've got a 0.5 guard, and we've got it in a closed position. And what we're going to be doing now is just working out any 
any imperfections along this line. So I can see a little bit at the back here. Let me just take that out. This 0.5 guard basically clears up what you've been trying to get out with the 0.2. It gives you that nice smooth effect. And then it's your job really just to keep that consistency all the way along with the fade. Uh, you might have to take a little bit more here, a little bit more there. On this side of the head, the O-bone is there. Uh, sorry, the O-bone is there, but there's a little a slight bone on the side here that I can feel. And that just needed a little bit more work to blend it in. And the other little bits can be broken up with a detailer. So we've got the corner of the detailer. I'm just breaking up anything that I don't like the look of there. Same on the back here, just a couple of little things there that need touching up. Next step is to just blend just a touch off that there. So you're putting the comb in, bringing it out. And we'll do that all the way around. Same on this side, gonna whip that out now. quite a good length at the moment uh, when styling it it was a bit short before but it's, again, it was a bit short before but it seems to have a good length so it sits back well at the moment i think that's because when no you took the sides out as well yeah. you've given it something to sit on like a base you know yeah, yeah. um what we'll do is we'll just trim the sides slightly and we'll just work out where that part is going to sit but you're happy with that length on the top really yeah yeah just just tidy it up, thin it out. So at the back here, I want that to sit. I don't want this to kind of stick up. So I'm going to comb that backwards at that point, instead of trying to split it all the way down. These few hairs here, they're going to become part of that. And then we're going to just trim the sides and make sure it sits flush there with seven inch scissors at the end. So we're going to pull down here. I'm going to pull it round. I'm going to angle my fingers like that. And I'm going to cut round so that when it sits, it sits with the curvature of the head. Like so. <laughs> I'm really happy with how that's sitting through the back there. I uh, just feel like it needs blending with a seven inch. We're just gonna work that all the way around. Sometimes it feels like you're only cutting a few hairs, but that's all it needs. The comb is working as the guard, stopping you taking too much off that hair. And then it's important to look in the mirror every time you've done that, and just check that that's sitting nice and flush. I really like the way that's sitting. Does that feel okay for you, dude? Is it true to not too much, or are you happy with that? No, that's cool. That's cool. I don't like to thin wet hair, because I like to see that the bulk it's removing. So, I'm just going to pick that up about halfway down it, and start thinning the edges, so not root thinning on this. It's just 20% thinner. This will help it sit as well. Just drag it through the back. So you've got a double crown, dude? Yeah. So the crown, if it's, if it's a double crown, normally it's really hard to get to lie down. So you have to be wary that you're not going to thin it too much so that it starts having a bump in it. Okay, that's 20%. Thin. Does that feel okay on the on the thickness? Feels much better. So you've got some king brown pomade. This is water based, so it's easy to wash out. I'm gonna run it just down that part in. OK, 
Hey, bro. Cool. Great, man. Happy? Very happy. Chris, we're at the Gentleman Bro Club. Got my hair cut by Charlie today. <laughs> Alright, bro. So, what we're going to be doing with this haircut is we're going to be doing a 0.5 skin fade and we're going to take it with a light zero around the edges just to make it that bit neater. We're then with the top, we're going to do pompadour. So, we're going to have like a nice tight parting on the left and all the hair is going to come backwards, slightly to the right. Let's do this. So what I'm doing, I'm going to put in my baseline. So with the beard, I want it in, I'm going to go in with a cutthroat razor, make it nice and pointed. So what I'm going to start off with the fade, is initially put it into that point, take my line in line with the temple. And I'm going to flip my clippers over and put in a faint line around the head. As I, weigh, as I make my way around the head, I'm going to slowly dip down to go around the occipital bone and then make my way back up again. This is only a faint line, so it doesn't need to be perfectly straight. So now, now that I've got my rough line, I just follow up to it. These are the, uh, just the, the wall uh, training clip, basically training clippers. The standard clippers using a, just a wall 0.5 guard. Going over with my, my uh, Jack Dean fade brush just to tidy up the hairs as I go along. Say was skin fade or was just a zero? Uh, this is uh, going to be a, a skin fade, but uh, we're only going to use the zero around the very edges. We don't want to go too short. And here we're at the beard again. Oh man, leave that like that. Just leave it like that, yeah? Yeah, on that side, <laughs> just one side. Create a new trend. Uh, I hear they're all doing it in Milan, so we'll just do what Milan's doing. So now I'm just going to swap over, swap it to my one guard and fully open it. So it's now a 0.5. And I'm just going to flick, flick at the line. So I'm not holding it flat. If I was holding it flat, it would be a 0.5. But I'm not. I'm holding it like a 90 degree and I'm just flicking it. What this does is it makes it that just a slight bit longer than that initial 0.5. And it flicks it up, making the hairs longer. So what I'm doing now is I've just swapped back to my 0.5 guard, but instead of it being fully open, so that's, that's closed, that's open, I'm now closed just at slightly and I'm now flicking at where that 0.5 line was where I initially drilled in like that so now I know that my 0.5 line was there I've now blended it out with this grade one and a half and this 0.5 there's like a one in the middle now I'm going to get my wall comb and do some clipper over comb. So I'm going to hold my hair out at an angle and I'm just going to clipper it off.
what this technique basically does is that it allows me to freely blend it out that one and a half. Because I know that that flaps the head. So what I've done now is that what I'm left with now is like to me it's going to be the longest part of the fade. This very this weight line around here. So I'm just going to go out with the scissors, doing scissor overcomb and just blending my way out. I'm going to use the fine side of the comb. Actually, this is the first time I've come across this technique. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Basically, I, I just feel like the uh, scissors give a bit more of a softer edge than the clippers. We're filming guys Now, my fiance is a bit deeper. So now that I've scissor blend, scissor overcomb the rest, there's still a faint weight line that I've left actually. So I've scissor cut the gap from there to there, just to blend it together. And as you can see, there's still hair here. I've left that longer because when I unclip this, see, I'm gonna want this hair to be longer so that when I scissor cut these both together, it has some hair to sit on and it actually blends in with the fade nicely. Is where his parting's gonna be. And what I like to do with the crown is I like to cut it to how it naturally wants to sit, how it naturally forms. Yeah, you do a strong crown. Because the crown's sitting here, and where that hair is that I left longer, which is there, when I pull it out all together. You can see that's where the hair is. That's the shortest point. You can see it's gradually getting longer. That means I just need to cut this hair to match, match up with it. Now it will nicely blend together. So that's why I left that bit just a little bit longer. Oh. So as I cut the top, I'm actually leaving this far left side longer than the right because this hair needs to stretch over and cut, sit around at the back. So as I take my new section here, I'm getting quite close to the front of the hairline. So I'm going to want to start over directing it, pulling it backwards. So this hair here, this is where I left it longer when I was scissor cutting and I'm pulling it backwards because it's going to be sitting backwards. So now I'm going to follow that line and just cut up, 
comb it again from a new section. That's where the line is. And I'm going to want to follow it and gradually make that line longer and longer. Give, give the camera what? Austin Powers trivia. Austin Powers trivia. So this section I've taken it. I'm just lightly point cutting it. So I just want to add some texture. Take a little bit more length off, just so it blends in that little bit more. Let's further the section up. So this is a, a Rusel brand. So it's, a, it's actually a product from the barbershop I was telling you about earlier, Scorum. It's their product. No, but what, what is it? Ah, oh, it's a grooming tonic. Okay, Put it in the hair when it's wet, then when you dry it off, gives it a level of hold, some texture, and it'll hold its shape. It's a little bit like a liquidized wax, really. That's how I try to explain it. So when I dry it in, it solidifies with the hair. Gonna dry the part in down, so I can see, I can see where that weight line is, and I'm gonna see that I need to go through that with the blending shears. Same again, except now this is the crown. So I want to dry it to how it naturally wants to be. I'm pushing the brush in reverse. So normally to pick up the hair, to pick up the hair, I'd go like that. But his hair's too short because I've cut it in to blend in with the rest. So I'm actually going to reverse. What that does is it just smooths the hair, hair cuticle, just smooths it over. The hair's getting a little bit longer now because I'm getting towards that other side. So I'm going to now start picking. I'm cool, bro. What we're gonna do is that weight line that I said I left, just to blend in the hair. And I've got my blending shears. And I'm just gonna go over that line. Yeah. These are A1s, uh, shears. Oh yeah, I've got, got to have that oil slick. That oil slick color. Sweet. Now, lovely. Now let's just get rid of those neck hairs, sharpen up the beard, and we're good. Got out the wool detailers. Just gonna follow the hairline. I actually take the hairline back just a slight bit, just so it looks a bit more fuller. Get rid of these neck hairs. I mean, these beard hairs even.
We're pretty much getting to the uh, finishing touches of the haircut now. So what I've done is I've just done a straight square neck line. So we taper our necks at Jones and Riggs. So I've made this straight line so I know where I need to go over with my zero. And that will just fade it right out. I'm just flicking out where I went over with the detailers. It's just a fade out into the skin. This is now some elegance gel. Where these neck hairs are, I'm now just going to go over it with a cutthroat razor. <laughs> and then we're going to be nice and smooth and clean. So what I'm using here, some Layrite natural cream. I just like to rub it in the roots. Don't worry about starting it just yet. Just make sure you get that product in there. As long as you work it into those roots, it will hold up the rest of the hair for the rest of the cut. If you put the product in the ends, it's just going to weigh it down. If you rub it in those roots, it's actually going to hold it. So now that the products are in there, let's grab my wall comb. While I'm, out, I'm going to use that at an angle and just rake, rake through it. And there we are, man. Sorted. 0.5 fade into a pompadour. <laughs> Cut through razor. I can see where his beard was lined up before. It's just all these little hairs there. Use my hand as a guard. So I know I'm not going to slice up my hand. <laughs> and I'll also use it to pull the skin down and get some, make the skin quite taut. Happy? Yeah, it was good. Charlie did an excellent job, as usual. <laughs>
We're the only barber shop in the whole of Dorset that's been t told we're not allowed to do it, but. Yeah. Well, we were the only ones that have had uh, the police and the council come to the barber shop to tell us that we're not allowed to do it. Everybody else has just got. It away. So, clipper over comb, just taking out the weight, just to create up a little bit of shape. Using the uh, wall magics as well today. They run really fast. I like the uh, lightness of the uh, cordless clipper. Really nice and easy to work with. I like the wall icon. They get rid of a lot of hair. They power through the hair nicely, but they're a little bit heavier. So you can see that you know, we're just building up a bit of shape now. I'm going to go in with uh, the one and a half through the bottom. So now, Carlos, what did I ask you to get me this morning for breakfast? Sushi. And what did my wife bring in without even knowing that I asked for it? She brought you sushi. Well, she knows you're weird, so. It wasn't, having sushi for breakfast is good, man. Well, it's not breakfast, I'm... So we're going with the icons with a 1.5. I'm just flicking it out on the ends just to blend that in. This is not a fade. This is just a short man's haircut. Okay, Dave's hair grows up and round that way, so we're just going to bring the clipper in at a different angle. <coughs> Take the hair away. You are special, Dave. Everyone's special. Special Dave. Show. Special, Special day! day. If, wow. if we use this video on YouTube, oh, the title should be Special Dave's Short Man Haircut. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we're going to uh, go scissor comb. Blending it in now from the clipper. <laughs> Working our way down to the oboe at the back. going through, cutting it dry so we can see where we're going with the shape and then we'll damp down the top. So this is like a classic man's haircut really, you know, it's like, this is, people have been having this haircut for generations, you know, and it's really nice to He's got a nice hair, man. Yeah, he's got really nice hair, and it's and it's um, it's really nice. And it's nice to see like a bit of shape in a haircut as well, not just clipped really high up to the crown, and you know, all the weight taken out of it. It's a, it's nice to actually work with um, somebody who wants a a real classic nice haircut, you know. And it's not all about just using the clippers. It's a nice combination of using pepper over comb, using your guards, using scissor over comb, scissor techniques, like this sort of haircut, although it looks really basic and really sort of like a standard haircut, you know, you actually use pretty much all your techniques that you would you would learn. Okay, so this is the part this is the part that comes over to this side. The hair will flip over this side. So what I've done, as you can see it, it lays over hangs over, so almost like an undercut bit there. I don't, I don't want it to look like an undercut. So what I'm doing is taking section by section and just blending it in. <coughs> what I'm gonna do is gonna follow this line from a short down to the front. Can you see it's arching round? And then we take the side yeah. parting. 
take the weight out. Basically, that is the two. Cheers, boys. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yeah, take care, mate. See you later. Okay, now we're damped down. I'm going to take this little bit of weight out through here. So I'm angling my comb around as I cut. So I haven't actually moved this position of my scissors, I'm just moving it around. So that's the way that the hair is growing. So the hair is growing in in this pattern. So I'm just following the pattern of the, of the growth to find where the weight is. So I'm going to leave this length here because I want to see the part in. I want it to lay nice and flat. And we'll come in probably with just a pair of texturizing scissors just to soften up that line. So I want to leave this length across the crown. I don't want it to be one length, I don't want it to look too heavy. So to come in and just tidy it up a little bit. A lot of movement through here on the crown. If I cut that short, it's just going to stand up. So I need to be really careful just to keep that length over there. Happy man. You happy? I'm very happy. Hey, this is Mahesh here for Beer Brand, and I am in Gentleman and Rogues Club, back home where I should be. This is Scott, and he's having a beer trim and a haircut. So Scott, tell us what, what you have done. Tight on the sides, please. So I think last time we went a two with the clippers. And then keep it long on top to sort of, because it's thinning out a bit. Okay. You know, just give that illusion of uh, some hair being there. All right. Uh, but maybe with a bit more texture, because I find it just sits there a bit flat, if that makes sense. Okay. And then the beard is, I think this is the length of me, so it needs a, a bit of a trim back. Okay, so you want to keep the length yeah. pretty much as it is. Yeah, maybe go a bit shorter, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're going to have it tied up, it will yeah. look a little bit tidier. Yeah. Maybe taper in the sides a little bit to blend in with the the, the haircut, yeah. uh, and then really reshape this. The moustache looks nice. Yeah, if it's a bit wispy on the end there. That's yeah, it. I can take the little ends off, yeah. but the the actual density of the, of the moustache I really like. So, why don't we keep the density of the moustache? Just take off the, the tips off the ends, blend this all in here. Um, do you want to keep the cheeks natural or do you want to sharpen them up? I think natural is fine, just from a maintenance point of view. Yeah, you know, otherwise, uh, yeah just, it's just a few, when you, so, I mean, it's fine when I do it, but obviously when you go home, you've got to keep, keep it up. Okay, so, and, we'll, and then we'll just uh, tidy this a little bit yeah. around here, just reshaping everything, yeah. really. Okay. When you, regards to what you were talking about with the haircut, and you were talking about, um, so you want to keep the length because you want to give it the illusion that there's still lots of hair there. <laughs> but you also want to have texture in it. Okay, so length and texture generally don't work well because yeah. all that happens is you, you keep the length, which, yeah. looks, which looks fine, yeah. and then when you texturize it, all it looks, it ends up looking wispy. Yeah. So it ends up looking long, wispy hair. Okay. So you end up looking like Donald Trump. So if you want texture, what I would suggest is have a, have a, have a little bit more off the top yeah. so then, then we can texturize it. Yeah. It won't look like it's it, it, you've got le less hair, yeah. all right? What makes it look like you've got less hair is when you grow it too long yeah. and then it starts looking like a comb over. Yeah. So actually the shorter it is, the denser it actually will look. 
Okay. So I'm not saying go for a short, short haircut. What I'm saying is you know, maybe, you know, take a bit more off than you maybe anticipated yeah. and actually, it, it, yeah. yeah okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, Scott's come into the barber shop with nice, clean, dry hair, which is nice to see. Okay. So I don't have to uh, wash it and then dry it before I start. I'm going to go in with a two. And we're using the Cordless Magics from Wall. They are lovely clippers. Just in case Wall want to send me some clippers. Isn't that right, Scott? Absolutely. Send me some too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what sort of what 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 sort of jeans? What sort of jeans do you like, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? Right. Talking about jeans, right. About 10 years ago, I bought my very, very first pair of 501s. Because everyone goes on, everyone used to say that 501s were like the best jeans ever, didn't they? They're the most uncomfortable pair of jeans I've ever had. Really? The cut is really weird on them. Huh? I always find the seams really hard. But yeah, the seams are really hard. And like, no matter, and, and I spoke to somebody who, who um, works in denim, right? He makes denim for a living. And he reckons that you should never wash your jeans. Yeah. You should, you could spray them down. If you've got like, if you get something on them, you can spray them down and, and clean them with a little bit of like cleaning fluid or something, but you should never wash jeans. They should be as they are. Okay, so we're gonna go around the back and we're gonna go up to the back of the O-bone here. I don't wanna go any higher than that because uh, Scott wants to keep some of his hair on top and create a bit of weight through there, create a bit of shape through there. So. We're just going to go in really through the midsection and working our way around to the back and then come around to the side and we're going to the temple and we're just flicking it out from the temple area really so that we can blend it in okay so we're clippering over comb just blending in that line just taking out that weight line And it's really nice and considerate of Scott to come in with dry, clean hair. It's really nice to work with. It's really easy. It's so much easier to clip a hair when it's dry. I still see people on YouTube and stuff clipping hair wet and I just don't understand why they do that. It's, it clogs up your clippers. You can't really see where you're going with the, with the work. But, I mean, if it suits them, it's great. But for me, it's just not something that I do. Okay, we're going to go in. Um, what I'm going to do, just while I've got the clippers in my hand, I am just going to just taper in just the beginnings of the beard. So I'm going to open my guard. So I've got an open two. And I'm going to come in and just take off that little edge. Just to get that little blend in there. That's the beginnings of the of the blend, and we'll do it both sides because he's got two sides to his beard. Some people don't. They're a bit, they're, 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 they look a bit crazy. While we're here, I'm just going to use my detailers. Cheers, mate. Just going to use my detailers just to marry these two together. Clean up behind the ear. Okay, I don't want to cut like a hard parting in. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna blend it in. We're gonna take this, this, this little step out. We're gonna take this little step out here. We're gonna take that weight out of there and we're gonna blend it in and then we'll have a look at the length on the top. Okay? This is what, this is what you'll find like as you start to, um, as it starts to fill, as it starts <laughs> to feel a little bit thinner on the top, um, you'll find that actually the sides feel really weighty. Yeah. So that's why we sort of sometimes suggest that, we sometimes suggest that you go a bit shorter on the sides, yeah. just so you get that, the balance back into your haircut. Yeah, it's really important to like, remember that 
Well, I was just saying to Scott that you know when you're when you're creating a shape, about being really mindful of how far up you've been. You know, we've covered up to this point, but you know, we're still cutting up to here. So it's really important to be mindful of the fact that you know, if I can up just a little bit too high, you can probably be holding the pants as, as a shape of the hair back there. I'm going to look at this length of the so I'm going to push this all forward. So at the moment you've been keep, this has been kept longer on this side because you've been combing it over. Yeah. What I'm going to make a suggestion is that we stop it, stop it from looking like a comb over. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we balance out that haircut so that we, it will go over to one side still, but you don't have to have this like <laughs> long bit of hair. Yeah. yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. Try not to cough, mate, when I'm talking and filming here. Right, trying to get attention, Carlos. Look, uh, look at him. Yeah, trying to get attention, mate. I don't think it works, mate. Okay, so we'll start here. The main, the no main, one told me. No one told me. No one, no one told me he was going to cut your hair off. <laughs> thought, I, I thought he was just going to check my prostate. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> That's why we wear these aprons, mate. These are splash proof. Okay, so you can see that it's, it goes over. It doesn't actually look that much shorter, yeah. but you've lost, you've lost this bit here, which just flaps around in the wind. So it's like. You know, even if you, don't, if you don't want to put any product on it, you don't have to think, oh God, I've got to put something on it, otherwise it just, you get that overhang as well. So it stops that overhang, but it's still, actually, when you've styled it, it won't look too much different, all right? So we're just gonna blend this side in. And then we just come back this way, just checking off the haircut. this little corner and then you're just going to go and do the hairline so just leaving the hairline nice and natural in the barber shop here we always sort of leave it slightly either tapered or natural we don't tend to box it off it doesn't grow out very well like that when you box it when you box it off it just doesn't it you know, within, within like a few days, it just doesn't look very nice. I think it always grows out much nicer if you can leave the hairline natural. Um, so we've just softened it out, just push it out a little bit. I'm not using the clippers on, on Scott's beard because we're not taking too much off. We're just giving it more of a maintenance trim. And I want to make sure that <clears throat> he keeps hitting me with his camera. Yeah, Carlos was going to be a wildlife photographer, and then he got he got bitten by a cheetah because he was so close to it, and he didn't he didn't realise. <laughs> it's like wow, that's really close. He just hit the cheetah in the face with his camera. <laughs> so we're just going in. 
I say with the scissors this time, just because I just don't. I want it to look softer. I want it to have a softer edge to it. Generally, the haircut is a bit softer, and the beard is as well. And we're leaving the cheek line natural. So I'm just we're just leaving that a little bit softer in here. Oh, Carlos, have you have you uh, just zoomed in on this? No, not interested. <laughs> Are you not interested? What? Zoomed in, eh? Come in, mate. Yeah, fil film it. Okay, so Scott wanted a little bit off the ends of his moustache. So he's going to come in. He's going to come in. With the end of the moustache, it's really amazing. left this heavier on the hair so it still looks nice and full yeah. but it sort of keeps it tidy away from the lip all right yeah. let's dry it through and let's see if we need to do anything else um, see how it looks all right might take a little bit more out of the sides there but we'll see all right So we're going to go through the texturizers just on the weight line. Soften up that weight line. I'm not going in too deep. Just just tipping the edges. And it really helps that blend. You can really see that, like as I, as I drop it down, like you can really see the blend softens right up. I only got all these tattoos because I wanted to be a barber. That's why Dave's not really good at his job because he hasn't got he hasn't got enough tattoos yet. He hasn't got any neck tattoos, so or hand tattoos, so he, he's not like a proper barber yet. <laughs> hey, Dave. Okay. So a little bit of matte product in the hair, and then a little bit of oil maybe in the beard. Cool. Happy with that? A bit of fingering. A little bit of temple smoke. <laughs> so I'm just going to go in and uh, tidy up your neckline. How's that look for you? Very good. Is that okay? So you've got a bit of texture on the top, but it does, you know, it doesn't look too short. And then we just tapered it in the sides, and then and then we did that with same. Yeah. Kept the cheeks natural. Moustache looks better, I think. Yeah. And I just kept this, the length through the front here. Very good. All right. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Good work, thank you. There you are, sir. Happy? Very happy, as always. Get your hair cut here, guys.
Hello, this is Greg Brzezinski for Beard Brand, and uh, we're here at the Men's Club Barbershop in Philadelphia with Jake the Barber, and I'm going to get a short summer haircut. What are you looking for today, Greg? Um, it's summertime, and I'd like to get a, um, rid of some of the weight and take it in. I don't want to skin fade this time, maybe a one on the sides, okay. uh, but let's take the top down by a good half. Okay, and you're not looking for a part, right? You're looking for... I'm just, yeah, let it go. Like, my natural part is probably somewhere right there. Okay, um, so you want to follow that? Uh, it looks like it's falling. Yeah, it looks like here. It, it, yeah, my part isn't hard down here. Naturally, right. it tends to be a diagonal going to the back. Okay. Um, if you can cut it in a way that I can hard part it or um, it can stand up. But for the summertime, I'd like to get rid of a lot of this weight. Okay, so take about half off the top. I would take about half. Um, not quite... Um, uh, not a crew cut, but right. you know, maybe let's call it a officer's cut. Yeah, but no skin fade on the side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my two, okay, and we're just going to knock down some of this weight. And I like to come in on an angle here and scoop this so I'm not just killing the beard, right? I'm just going to come in like this and then go up. I don't want to come into the beard, I want to come off of the beard and go up, all right. Just knocking this down. Come from the bottom. You see, I have a little cowlick on the back of my neck there. Can you talk a little bit about cowlicks and how you deal with them? This so, so this, thing. so this area right here. Uh, if you notice, I, I went down. Right, I cut. I'm going up because the, the rest of the hair on his head is growing in this direction. So we're going against the grain, it's getting close, right? So we're gonna run into this area, which is a swirl, so the, that means the hair is growing in every direction. So if you really wanna get that, this area to this length, you're gonna have to come in right here, right here, down, up, all right, and that's gonna knock that down. If you ever run into an area, uh, especially in the nape, which is this area right here, um, when there's calyx and swirls, and you don't know, you know, how to taper that out, you're just gonna have to come up, over, right, left, down, all right, and it's gonna knock it down. So that's how you combat a calic. We're just fading this out. We're just kinda using that C stroke. All right, open it up a little bit. We're just fading it out. We just want to make our blending process as easy as possible when we get to the shears. So, the method I like to do is when I have a bigger guard on here, you know, I just get my comb, I lock the hair down, and I just kind of go through it with the clipper. As you can see, this area is going to be a lot easier to blend with the shears now instead of having a nice hard chunk. So now I'll take my one, all right, same deal. Just kind of scoop. And we'll go right to about the arch here, almost at the arch. And you wanna just kind of bring it below. Same deal with this cap, right? So we're gonna go up, down, over. We just wanna make sure that this calic is eliminated. Okay. It's going around the head. Coming up and over. Just gonna be moving my clipper up a little bit more. I like to fade up for a, a one fade, so I'm just gonna adjust my lever just a little bit. I'm just gonna flick it as I go up, right? And I like to stay on one side and just knock this line out. Little by little here. All right. A little bit more. Throw my two back on and just kind of corner it a bit.
Now we're just going to taper out the back. All right. So it's going to be all the way to nothing, so it's almost at zero. I'm just going to go right around. All right. Open a little bit. Try to keep it low. You don't want to chase a line all the way up his head. So what you want to do is just kind of chisel it a little bit. All right, and we just open it all the way. And this is just a little bit smaller than a one. All right, I like to come up just around the ears, just a tad. And we're gonna line it up. Very light lineup. You don't want to, you really don't want to cut into the hairline too much. You can see how the, how the hairline is right here. I'm just going to lightly tap. Try to remain as natural as possible in these areas so the stubble isn't showing in a day or two. And same thing for this side, just want to kind of lightly tap it, get rid of these little hairs. Okay, so now that brings us to the sheer portion of our haircut, so we're just going to wet the hair down. Take about half off the top. Start in the middle here. We can always take more off. So I err on the side of the ca side of caution here because I can't put it back on. I can definitely take more off. I can hear the comments now. No. I, I really like getting my hair cut short in the summertime. It's just, the best. It's the best. Um, it's easy it's in the so summertime. Easy. Exactly. Yeah, and we're in and out of the water a bit. Sure. And so Do you go to the shore a lot? We actually go up to the Susquehanna River. Oh, nice. So we're kayakers and canoers. Cool. But we swim up there. But uh, being able to jump in and out of the water and not have to worry about my hair. Absolutely. Just, yeah. And there's something nice about having short summer hair and mm -hmm. a little longer in the wintertime. Goes, we're just that, that's good. I'm liking this. Yeah, I'm just gonna trim that little bit. I went over once and I decided we can definitely go a little bit shorter. I'm just gonna take these little ends off here. And we're just gonna blend the sides. I like to use a bigger shear for the sides because uh, I can eliminate more hair faster. I use Hattori Hanzo shears. They're uh, the technique? Yes. After the late great samurai, Hattori Hanzo. How do you like it, Greg? It's good. Cool. All right, now we're just gonna dust them off here. I'm gonna get these hairs right here.
Cool. Awesome, man. Let's get some shots. Cars cost of a beer brand, and uh, I'm back at Town Grind with Breeze today. We're going for a more classic era style, and um, yeah, let's go. So, today, what we want to do is to create a, like a natural side part, keep it quite short. Good morning, keep it quite short back inside. We don't look too much on the skin, and to go back more like a natural hairline, and get rid of, get rid of the volume here. Perfect. And always uh, to keep it natural. So that that side part and the natural will still give me the option of do my like sort of messy pump style. Exactly. Like, sort of like I have today, right? Yeah, so today to make sure basically for the hairstyle you want is to get rid of the thickness here or also push down the rest. So to make it more easy, we have to get rid of all the volume here, but keep it natural. So the idea is to keep the length but get rid of the thickness. Okay? Sweet. Perfect. Let's go. Ready. So today where we start, we start with kind of like the longer length and we go down step by step. So we start with number three today, two, one and zero to the bottom. Don't make it too short, but just create a nice contrast and especially make a natural hairline. Okay? So we don't go too high with the machine. The idea is to make it easy to fade with the scissors. So that's why we keep kind of a, a long-ish length for the connection. It makes everything easier to keep it long to fade. So make sure you always go down with the machine from like a three to an half to, to create like a natural connection on it. So what I do, you see, from a three to one and a half, and step by step, I'm going to go down. And whenever you say the length is right, we don't go shorter, okay? I guess you've been used to cutting really short, make a line and start to fade it. I do a different process. Everyone does a different, but exactly. they always have the same result. At, uh, so you see, from this part here, we have a light... Scar. Yeah, a light scar. So what we want to do, we want to make sure we soften up the edges to make sure this fades into the skin. So from that, we basically, we have to keep like a natural fade here and to go against and to make it quite short without looking too shaved, okay? I'm also for your hairstyle you want to get. I'm cutting shorter on the edges where basically all the volume coming back after a few weeks, you know, you always have this annoying point which is here, here and here. So all these parts can be softer to make sure your haircut, when you go back, go back in a more natural way. If you leave the thickness here, after a week or two, it usually pops out a little pops bit. Out, yeah. So just make sure you keep it quite soft and natural, okay? okay. You keep like flicking the grades. Exactly. So basically on my machine here, I can change millimeters by millimeters. Ah. So it can start from 0 0.5 to 0. So at the moment I'm on number, number one and I can create kind of like a, a 1.5 with this. And you keep ah. flicking. It's to basically to make sure the fade look really soft. And it's just a matter of ah, see how the okay. shade look like. And after it's just your own perception of it. Just push it, change the shade, change the, the matter of like the way you push it and you to create again like a natural style. Always keep on mind the flick is your friend. Otherwise you make hard lines and it's much much harder and take much longer time basically to fade your hair. When you flick properly, the fade is almost done by itself. If you want to do it with scissors, it's gonna make your life easier, basically. Okay. 
something different. Exactly. Different background. Sky, we're not allowed music on. Yeah. <laughs> you are allowed. Yeah. Rethinking in. Small machine. Putting some examples on how to style or how to use the product with no sound. Yeah. On the edge, it's soft, not the line. Again, the flicking movement. So, but you gotta show to me some sure examples anyway. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look sharp at all. Ask Tom to send me some links. Ask you, ask him for some links and send them to me. Even if they're not air related. Even if they're not air related, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm also looking for ideas to. I think I'm gonna start doing some personal ones on my. on our dinner and in my channel. So what I'm using today is going to be with the razor overcome. So that's going to soften up the hairline here and make it quite natural, okay? And get rid of the volume. So when you use the razor like this overcome, you have to follow the natural movement of the hair. Being quite gentle and after, just push it a little bit more. Just make sure you never touch the skin with this. And you see, we haven't even made the fade between the machine and the hair. And just pushing with the razor is going to help for you when you're going to work with the scissors. You want one of them? Black one. Black one. When you use the razor, never go on the roots. Just on the third part longer. Just on the edges to make the hairline softer. So now we're going to take care of the fade here to go back to a square shape. So just make sure you keep this length to give you the freedom to do whatever you want with the end. But never cut too short on white hair because when you dry out, you look completely different. So when you go on wet hair, always be quite gentle. It's much more for texturizing, fade, but don't cut too much of the lamp, especially when you don't want to touch the lamp like today. Okay? Getting back into the shape of this one. So the reason I'm using the thinning scissors is to create like a natural shape. You could use a straight scissors, it'd be a similar effect. Just if you use the thinning scissors, never go into the roots. Always basically just chopped it at the end. If you go into the roots, you're going to create some spiky hair. So just at the end, soften up the, the length. And after at the end, you come back with the straight scissors to make everything perfect. So always make sure you keep following the shape of the skull. We don't want to go here because the point is to keep this length to create the side part. So when you come with the scissors, you come here and you keep going straight up. So now what I'm going to do, I'm using the same technique again with a smaller comb. Make again the end softer. Just make sure you're quite consistent on your movement. Always fast and soft. Short length. You always start from the bottom. And again, quite soft. Quick movement. And you keep doing until you have no length to cut anymore. The reason I use a white comb, again, is because you see all the details. There you are, so like everything. Give a square shape and make your hairline quite natural. Same here. Make sure we keep the square shape. And you see, we're in natural hairline. There is no hard line at all. And we're gonna come back here on dry hair because always do a finish on, on dry hair. Always make sure you keep the length here to be able to style it. Because if you cut this part too short, it will start to stick up.
to this part here, what tends to stick up quite a lot. I'm going to wait to cut it on dry hair because it will be completely different feeling on it. again it's quite some soft and Once it's dry, again, quite soft, you go with the thinning scissors, just on the edges. When you've got woody straight hair like yours, it makes the haircut look much more natural. And we're going to finish with the straight scissors to get rid of all the small hairs. Again, especially when you cut on dry hair, the mirror is your friend. You can see exactly how the volume is sitting. Put your hands on the back and you can see the volume here. There is no any disconnection, there is no anything popping out and this sits flat. It doesn't stick up. Really soft with the scissors to make sure you don't create any line. Again, the motion of the scissors is the most important. <laughs> and never stop halfway through. Always cut up to the top. So here you are. You're going to be able to do both of the style. The volume is great. We still have some light volume here we're going to do. I think I suppose grey hair as well. The grey hair is a different texture. Basically the grey hair attempt always to stick up a little bit more. So to get rid of all the small like popping on hair, you have to cut on dry hair. Otherwise on wet hair, they kind of like sit on the scalp and when they dry, you just pop it. That's why you use the scissors to make sure it doesn't really change the shape of your haircut, but you just touch what you need. When I'm just finishing everything, just make sure everything is perfectly clean. Again, the flick is important to make sure it's quite natural, you don't create any sharp lines. And to be even more fussy, you go with a really small comb. Go straight to the scalp. You can use the thinning scissors and just smooth up the shades. Just make sure, again, you're quite soft and gentle on that to make sure you don't break the square shape we have on the mirror. So here, it creates kind of like a natural Part. So to make sure it doesn't look like an undercut or something a little bit too rough or tough on the hairline, just come here and texturize the end. Well, basically the hair grow. There's no specific technique for that, it's just your own judgment and the way you feel the hair. So the last way to get rid of the small shades. Again, you have to be quite gentle on that. 
they soften up the shade because this curl here it's a little bit deeper on the scalp so you just create a natural shade so go with the thinning scissors and really gently touch to create like a more natural light perfect mate what do you think is it short enough for you yeah i have a feeling on the yeah, top the, the, the length is good quite simple when you style your hair keep your hair fingers open make it look quite natural put product all way and after just a touch with your fingers texturize the style create the hairline can you get this up this of course because this so you could do something see quite smart natural easy going for the morning how do you feel man yeah i like it Hey amigos, Cars Costa for Beard Brand and today I've got a little surprise for you guys. I'm coming here to number 69. This is my friend I haven't seen in a while. Ah. Jay. <laughs> Jay. How you doing man? You okay? Jay's nice gonna to cut you. my hair in his own house. Hey, hey. Follow Welcome. us. Well, I think we're gonna go for something a bit different. I mean, Carlos hasn't had a parting for quite some time, so it'll be nice because he's going to a few events. He's going to an event tonight. So it'll be nice to maybe just put a little soft parting in there. I'm going to keep a bit of that weight, though. That's the thing, so that if he wants to wear it normally like he does, just all up, the, the length is still there that he can play with. Um, but, yeah, I'm not really going to, like, take it too tight there with his parting. I think not too much length coming off, to be honest, because, you know, I think Carlos likes his longer hair. Um, we'll see. We'll try and make it versatile as well. So if he wants to wear it down, he can still wear it with a load of texture and just something for the weekends, you know, where it's just a bit loose, a bit messier. And then I think, yeah, obviously we're typical with him, skin fade, isn't it? You know, that's what Carlos is all about. And we'll just see what's going on with his crown as well, because his crown... Right, so that's what I was going to say about the crown. So where do you, know, do you think the parting on this side or this side? Because no. I've had it before on this on side, then I switched to that Yeah, side. yeah. Well, what... But what you work it out. The thing is, out. is like, what feels more natural for you? Like, when you're... I don't even know anymore, but you, yeah. you just... Okay. You work it out. Well, look, let's have a look. I mean, you know, you've just washed your hair. You've, you know, got all your product out there, so I can see what the last trim was. And maybe... It's grown so quick. It has, man. We've got a little bit of Tupac sure. in the background. Yeah, maybe we'll go on this side because obviously your crown's there, right? So it's just, it's... It'll be the right thing to I've do. I've got two work. crowns, yeah. don't I? No, no, you've just got the one. It's just got a really, really strong growth pattern and it kind of grows in on itself. So I think, you know, if we have a look there, mm. I'll step out the light. That's on your natural part. That's coming straight from your crown. So we might as well just stick with that, to be honest, instead of forcing it on the other yeah. side. I'm happy with yeah. Wiley. Cool, cool. Well, let's section you out and we'll, we'll do your fade first and then uh, we'll crack on with the top. So I'm going to go in here, we're just going to remove some weight. I'm going to keep his corners because, you know, Carlos likes corners. He doesn't like cutting corners, does he? We just remove the weight all the way around the head. I'm going to leave a little bit more there that I can just kind of play with the scissors because I don't really want to go too crazy with the clippers first. Remember people, it's all about what you leave on, not what you take off, right? That's what she said. I might take your fade a little bit higher today. We'll see. That's cool. What are you, what are you using? Uh, we're just using the wall magic clip. I find they're really, really good because even though your hair's wet, we can still cut the hair when it's wet. A lot of people have switched over to the seniors now, but I found them a little bit too heavy for me. So I'm here with a 175 guard. I mean, it equates to a 175. It's your wall 1.5. There's such great little guards that they brought out. These premium with the, the metal, they just don't come off, do they? As you can see, I'm just going straight into where I've clipper over combed. 
So we're almost matching up. It's almost blending immediately. And you see my strokes are just going straight square. So we're not going too much into the hat. I'm just going in here with the balding clippers. I'm going to keep the, the skin quite low. And what I might do is keep him with a little bit of an edge up there as well, just because he's, he's got to save his beard for a, for a little uh, video that he's going to shoot in a couple of weeks. So it might be nice just to have a little bit of a shape up there. I'm just going in. We're going to drop it a little bit at the back. You see, that's the space I've got my, for my fade. So I'm just basically going to create that all over the head. We're going to say goodbye to the scar because that's going to be skin now. Carlos and all of his scars. But yeah, so this haircut was actually very spontaneous. Uh, Jay, and Jay and I were talking in last night. I said, ah, I, I, I'm coming to London. I've got a meeting. Yeah, man, let's let's let me let's up and it. you can cut my hair. I was like, so, well, I'm off. I'm not working. So unfortunately, you're going to have to come down to my number 69. <laughs> to my crib. To my crib. I'll show you what's in my fridge later. Probably nothing, to be honest. A <laughs> little bit of orange juice. <laughs> right, so I put my zero line in just with the, the balding clippers. I find the balding clippers are nice because you don't have to worry about uh, going in with the trimmers as well. So I'm just going to go in here. We're going to put his head at a bit of an angle like that. Um, I always find the angle helps a lot when you're going in and just clearing out that line because it's almost graduating a little bit. As you can see, I'm going in with the corners of the, of the blade as well, just because he's got some dark patches that sometimes you can't really reach, just going straight on. I'm just here with an open, just clearing up some of that. And you can almost see that the fade's kind of taking shape. Still gonna be a bit of work on it though. I'm going to a 0.25 now. And back to the zero. What I find is pulling the skin down helps so you don't go too high. I'm putting it with my thumb there, as you can see, pull the skin down so you're not lifting the fade up anymore. And I'm just kind of juggling in between the 0.5 and 0.25 now. I'm also trying to work with the grain of his hair, as you can see, it's growing forward there and then back here. So we don't want to go too with the same sort of stroke or else you're going to have problems with that fade. Back to the 0.25 again. Just same, same deal that I did on the other side. How was Portugal, Carlos? Did you have fun, man? It was nice. It was um, nice just to see my family, man, really. Yeah. It was just about visit, visiting just the family, yeah. yeah. Also, I haven't been there since 2000, since I came to England, 2002 wow. or 2003. Wow. That's where I used to live. I work in Germany. Why did you say that in a French accent? I don't know. That's very, very strange. Very peculiar, my I friend. I like to mix it up. <laughs> so what's happening with my hair, mate? Oh, we're just finishing off the fade at the back here. And then I'm probably just going to do a little bit of light scissor over comb and see what our shape's looking like. And then we'll move on to the top. Yeah, I got one question, man. What, what, what persuaded you to do this, Carlos? What, my beard? Yeah. I mean, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but it's just, you know, uh, you look a lot skinnier now, I think. Well, no, you, just, you can see... Not my, in the belly. You can see my face. Yeah, you can see your face. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen your face, to be honest. Hey, man, I've been saying it for the past three years that I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. Yeah. I just thought, that. you know what? I want to finish my neck tattoo, so yeah. I'm just going to do it, man. It's gonna go in here. This is the new little Barrett that I picked up off the wall. It's actually quite quite a good little machine, to be honest. I'm sure, Adam, you used it, you know. Barrett's are all right. They're good to just kind of remove the, the dark spots. What about that technique you're doing now? But this is a little something I learned from uh, this uh, Vince, Vince the Barber. He's out in LA. He's got a place called Grey Matter and this kind of just helps if you've got any of those dark spots that you know you just can't get rid of because they're sticking out. It's almost like using thinning scissors on really short hair.
Right, just going in with the Andes. Doing a little bit of a clean up here. As you can see, I'm still keeping his skin really, really low. I find that these are the nicer foils because they have moving plates, which can get into all those difficult to reach spots that are kind of like caused by dips and bones. I'm just gonna go in now and remove some of this weight here that we've got from clippering. You can see I'm still angling it out, so I'm probably still gonna go in with the scissors and just make sure that we're good. You can see the crown's giving us a bit of a, always gives a bit of a problem on his hair, but I prefer to cut that properly once it's dry at the end. You know what, the noise of this, the seas, the shears, whatever you want to call them, yeah. it's making me even more sleepy, man. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, it's very... Therapeutic, right? Yeah, very calming. Well, it's maybe just because you're having your hair cut by me for a change. We don't have any gangster rap in the background. You want to try and move the scissors as quick as possible so you don't create any lines or gaps. Very difficult on Carlos's hair because it grows all funny directions and he's got a few spots everywhere. Spots? Spots, yeah, man. As in Scars and oh, right. lighter spots, you know. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. your grey hairs, I mean, uh, your natural highlights, shall I say. Well, I do have some blonde <laughs> patches, especially in the back. But now there's grey ones. Let's cut the top of your hair now, just a little bit. We're just gonna blend it in. I'm not really gonna take much length, as I said. There you go, isn't that for good? There's not much I have to blend from the back here because I think the last haircut you took you quite short, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is maybe just keep both of your corners, even this as well, so that when you wanna wear it up, you can, without you know having this blended into that because you know what your hair's like. If I blend that into this, mm. it's gonna stick out all the time, right? Mm. So better that we keep that as almost a bit of a disconnect, right? We'll see once it's dry. I'm just gonna go in and cross check it quickly. And you see, I'm just freshening up your ends. I'm not doing too much here. Oh. Bless you. Thanks, so you see, I've still kept, that's not gone much shorter than what it was from the last haircut, mm -hmm. right? But at least you've got the versatility of wearing it, boom, up without the parting, or you can put the parting in. I'm gonna blow dry your parting in and then we'll see what it's all doing. I'm just gonna work with this pattern here, just on the crown, just gonna blow dry it natural. So what I'm gonna do here is just kind of soften this undercut that we've got going on this side because I don't want to blend it in completely, as I said. So we're just going in point cutting. You can see where the disconnection is there. I'm not cutting the corner off completely, we're just softening it. This is just trying to direct that hair that way so that he doesn't have to really stress too much about it. It'll be nice if you actually wash it and come back and then I can style it for you. Mm -hmm. Just so we can see how it all sits also after a wash. You know me, I like my natural haircuts. Right, I'm just gonna go and blend in your beard quickly. And let you walk out like that, right? Jay, the beard blender. <laughs> Part two. Part two.
The Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Have you seen the new Sasha Baron Cohen? I saw a clip, so don't tell me anything. I saw uh, a clip of him talking on Facebook. You really gotta watch it. I know. <laughs> Making weird noises. Who? Me. I don't know why. It just happened. Carlos has just washed his hair. Woo! He's not feral anymore. I washed my own hair. Good. Clever boy, ain't I? Well done, Carlos. Shall I put some in there for you, Carlos? What, brother? Yeah. Yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. No, I just go down there. I don't know why, but my latest haircuts, I look like an army guy. Yeah. Like that's... It's just uh, really the, square, right? Yeah, where, where is he from again? I was talking about this today. Who? Uh, is it... No, is it the, the game? Not Street Fighter, what's the other one? Oh, uh, Tekken. Is Tekken or Street Fighter? Tekken. Which one is the one that's got the Captain Guile or whatever his name is? Uh, is it Guile? Yeah, I think, yeah, you think. Is that Street Fighter? Street Fighter, right? yeah. yeah. I think it's Street Fighter, yeah. Bison. But you know the, 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 the blonde guy with the. No, that's Paul from Tekken. Is it Paul? Yeah, with the blonde. And yeah, they just with go, the army. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, especially today with the Yeah, exactly. And these fucking Guile from Street Fighter. Yeah. Guile, yeah. Fight yeah. Tekken as well, man. Come on. Finish him. Oh, that's Mortal Kombat, sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, man, it's good, it's good. That's Let's, fun. um, yeah, I really like it. I really like it. Again, different. I haven't had the parking for a while, but it's also different. I like the little <laughs> crazy <laughs> going on in there. Yeah. What do you call this, mate? This. Tsunami. Captain Guile. <laughs> Captain Guile <laughs> Tekken Ryu. Captain Guile haircut. That's it. Hadouken! All right, now what do we want to do? What's up, Steve? Uh, excited Not much. to be here. I, uh, I've been growing the hair out for a bit, and um, I'm thinking of doing something like uh, what Carlos has, uh, which is going to be probably be about right there. Okay, and so then, we're taking off a lot of hair. Yeah, and then fade it up to the best, you know, pretty to the best of. You want to go skin down here? I, I don't think I want to go skin. So I'm thinking maybe like a one. Okay. And then I want to kind of like, you know, forward and up is, is kind of like the look I'm going for. So whatever that takes to kind of have somewhere to where he's right. It'll take you styling your hair. I don't blow dry hair. No. No. Yeah. Well, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, we'll get you taken care of. We're taking a lot off the top, though. Do you want to comb it to one side or the other, or just straight back? No, I, I think I'll go more just like centered, non-parted. Okay. Well, the first thing you need to do is prepare the hair by combing through it. You're checking the scalp for any imperfections, moles, things like that as well. You want to, hair you don't want to cut, you want to get it out of your way. Hair you do want to cut, you want to have it in the right place to cut. Yeah. 
Now we start from the back, take the back down, then I go to the right side, then to the left side. Um, I work from the top down so I don't put a line in the hair so I don't have to take it out. Want a pro tip? Don't wear a hat to the barbershop. This is a power line. It's similar to a Oster 76 made by Oster. It's just got a little bit more power. Yeah, it's pretty heavy duty. Yeah. This is kind of a unique barbershop. We don't use guards here. We just use the detachable blade clippers. And what I'm doing is I started with a four and three quarter blade. Now I'm using a two blade. And we'll end with a one blade, take it down to a one down low. Old fashioned way of doing it. More old school. Yeah. And uh, blades do give you a cleaner cut than guards. See this weight line here? We're going to knock that out with the two blade. And then we'll use the one and take this down low. Smooth out that transition from the one to the two. Back to the two, yeah. the Oster T finisher.
Mind if I trim your eyebrows? That's fine. See how this is sticking out right here? Mm -hmm. I want to shorten that right through here so it comes up square. Yeah. You want me to do that? Whatever you think, man. I'm in. Okay, and I think you need to kind of leave your. My part a little. Yeah, you got a natural part there. So, that look good to you? Right length? You got good volume in your hair without blow drying it. Yeah, it's been a while since it's been this short, so. <laughs> Like a shorter haircut suits me the best. It's just I like variety too, so I always try new, new styles and new cuts. Let's lead a good life, Eric. I feel no stress. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I rode this morning, so... Hold that next step, Eric. Look at that dry. <laughs> 